Hello everyone, my name is Loco and welcome to another StarCraft 2 video. Now this is actually the very first video that I am recording after coming back from holiday. As some of you may be aware, I decided to take 8 days off for the very first time since like... 12 months or so. I know I took like two days off during Christmas time, but before that, I think the last time was last year, July. But anyways, all of the videos that went up over the last week or so, they were prepared in advance. They were scheduled to go live automatically. I hope that you enjoyed watching them. I actually saw a lot of people commenting and saying some really positive things, so I'm happy to see that a lot of you enjoyed them. But anyways, um, it's finally time to get back into recording. I, uh, I'm not gonna lie, I spent the last eight days doing a whole lot of nothing and basically just laying down by the pool and drinking a little bit too many cocktails and watching a little bit of WCS Valencia, a StarCraft event, and then also eating way too much food. It's been nice. I feel very rested, but it's time to get back into the swing of things. Now, a lot of you suggested that I should go ahead and cast this player right here in the top left-hand corner of Catalyst. A lot of you became massive fans over the course of last weekend of this Taiwanese Protoss player. Spawning in the top left-hand corner of Catalyst and playing with the blue Protoss probes, we have none other than Hass. Easily the most requested video in, in recent times. I'm not gonna lie, I had so many people reach out. Already, look at that. He's going for something a little bit out of the ordinary. His opponent spawning in the bottom right-hand corner. He's from Brazil. Easily one of the strongest non-Korean Terran players on the planet. So I'm really curious to see how Has will be able to pull this one off. We have none other than Kalazur. We see a gas steal and a proxy. What is he got a proxy? Judging by the amount of gas, it almost has to be a robo, right? Looks like Kalazur will figure out that something is not quite right. Now here's the thing about Has. Has plays a playstyle that is 100% his own. No one has really been able to, you know, play at the very least at as high of a level as, as he plays at, um, with as strong of a strategy. It's actually quite phenomenal, the amount of value he manages to get out of all of these hyper-aggressive strategies. And that's really the name of the game. His micro is excellent, he's really good at keeping his units alive and just simply controlling, for example, a war prism, and I think that may very well be what we have in store right here as well. Now, has already going for a shield battery. I think that this one is mostly just meant to to potentially, if he needs to, heal up this this pylon. You can, if you manually target it with a uh, with a shield battery, you can actually restore the shields on that as well. But already, we see the shade moving forward. The adept is out. I think it's gonna be an immortal. I think it almost has to be an immortal. There we go. Oh my god. All right. So he is indeed going for a hyper aggressive cheese. Now the thing is, Kalasur decided to go for a barracks into a command center. He did go for the command center in base, so at the very least he's got that going for him. But he has nothing to deny these shield batteries from going up on the low ground. This is not something we see a whole lot. And the thing is, like Hass is definitely the best at playing these kind of styles. All right. For example, a weaker Protoss player would probably not have made the second adept just to patrol it right here in the middle line. And this is something that Has does. He's got pretty much every single angle covered. Now, I'm really curious to see how Kalazura is going to play this one out. Already going for the double bunker. Really quick um, tech lab actually on the factory. I think that going for a siege tank is nice. But as soon as, like, a shield battery is down on the low ground, right? Which is what we see already. Look at that. The amount of value you can get out of a really small army is quite, uh, quite magnificent. Once again, though, the Reaper here on the other side of the map trying to be a bit of a nuisance. Hass is still gonna patrol around here for a little while longer. One of the shield batteries, I think is what that was, did end up getting cancelled there, but more and more of them are going down already. And here's what's gonna happen. Hass is gonna continuously send these shield batteries, uh, as well as these Immortals, towards the front of the Terran base. And as soon as he gets the Warp Prism out, he can juggle. Basically, this is like a, a StarCraft 2 version of juggling. You can try and get so much value out of a relatively small army. Well, he does need to be careful, though. The Siege Tank is already providing a lot of value. Immortals now moving forward. They are actually in range now of the Siege Tank. And with that bonus to Armored, they shut that one down in just a couple of seconds. And this is what Has does almost every game. And even though it's very predictable, he does it better than anyone else, which is what makes it so scary. For example, even stealing the gas there and knowing that Kalazur would not really have the resources to properly get rid of all of those units, he was forced to pull a lot of SCVs off the line, right? So reduce the mining time there for a little while. But here we go. The Warp Prism is out. The Siege Tank is being target fired down. The Immortals are being juggled towards the low ground, towards the safety of the shield batteries. And Has manages to keep them alive for a little while longer. 
Now, here's the thing. More and more immortals will come up. Right? And that was, uh, that's what makes this so very scary. A couple of the shield batteries, though, are running low on energy. So, Haas does need to keep that one in mind. They will not have indefinite amounts of... Uh, of, uh, of energy, obviously, but they will regenerate some more here. The longer that this game goes on, and I'm not gonna lie, Kalazura, he seems like he's falling apart already. This game has only been started, you know, it's only five minutes long, but already it looks like this may very well be a game that is extremely difficult to cover. As long as that warp prism is up in the air, and as long as these immortals are juggled properly, there's so much value you can get out of this army. Obviously, once you get like three, four, five immortals out, right, you can pretty much two-shot bunkers. These siege tanks are gonna have a really hard time really providing a lot of value. I do like the idea of Kalazur going for it, but his micro needs to be on point. I like this, look at that. He's creating like a bit of like a triangular setup here with, with bunkers. I think if you put the siege tank in the middle, you can get a lot of value. Or I guess in the back there. Just simply reducing the service area. Immortals though are running very low now. A lot of them uh, actually not just using their shields anymore, but really getting rid of their, uh, of their lives already. Obviously their lives will not regenerate. Looks like, by the way, on the other side of the map, just judging by the minimap, that there's no more Reaper. So that's pretty scary, but considering there's no Viking out or whatever, right? Like, what exactly are you going to do against all of these flying Immortals? They're literally flying Immortals. This is like a new school way of playing Protoss, and players are not sure what to do against it. As a matter of fact, I don't know the result of this game, but as a matter of fact, slight spoiler alert, has... A relatively unknown player in, you know, I guess, uh, events leading up to this. Oh, here we go, by the way. We'll talk about that in just a little bit. Immortals actually running very low. There's four Immortals right now. Beautiful pickup once again. So far, all of the Immortals are staying alive. Siege Tank once again picked up with relative ease. And so... <laughs> this is so dirty. I... I <laughs> this is so gross. Once again, these Immortals are kept alive for so very long. Siege Tank does come out. It's once again sieging up. A lot of siege tanks uh, have gone down already, and that's actually one immortal as well. Slight miss micro. But anyways, Haas made it all the way until the grand finals, where he finally went down to Cyril, widely considered to be the greatest player outside of South Korea, and maybe even one of the very best uh, in the world right now. But anyways, um, Cyril shut it down relatively easily, but even then, Haas made a whole bunch of mistakes in the grand finals, and I feel like he could have actually... If he didn't miss micro... He would have probably been able to take at least three games. It's kind of insane. The series may have actually gone completely in his favor if his micro was 100% on point. Now, he lost one Immortal, right? He didn't need to lose that Immortal. I don't know I don't know exactly what his plan is going to be, though. Call us this. Here's the thing, right? He's mining with a whole bunch of mules off of a small amount of mineral patches. He can already secure an expansion. And has. I mean, this base will run out in just a little bit. I love this. Look at that. Couple of these uh, adepts now also threatening to go into the mineral line. Once again, there's not actually a Viking coming up. That might very well be critical here. But once again, right, with the War Prism just simply in the back of the base. Oh, there's actually already a Viking out. I didn't even notice that one. Well, that does mean that three immortals are gonna find their deaths here. Yeah, nicely done by Kalazur. Actually, hiding the fact that he even made. Uh, you know, that Viking until the very last moment and then zoning away against all of his army. Well, apparently Haas has had enough. He's gonna try and see if he can move forward just a little bit more. A whole bunch of SCVs actually uh, move down towards those bunkers. At the same time, a few Adepts made their way into the mineral line, but they will be gunned down, but not without these siege tanks actually killing some of their own. Right? I think a couple of the SCVs there went down to, uh, to friendly fire. But anyway, so uh, here's the thing, yeah. There's no natural expansion from Haas. He's 100% committed. He could still expand off of this, but judging by the fact he actually added on more gateways, I don't think that's going to be the case. I think he's just going to play this really aggressive one base style. Galazor, though, his main base will run out faster. The thing is, these mules, they bring in additional resources, but they also mine out mineral patches quicker. So that's going to make like a minute or so of income difference. I actually don't mind this situation for Haas. Now, gotta keep in mind, he lost three immortals for practically free, right? Here we go, actually, a couple of Vikings moved across the map. They deal bonus against Mechanical. They didn't used to do that back in the day, but nowadays they do, and that does mean that one of the Stalkers will end up dying. They also deal bonus to, uh, I guess, probes there, because they also are Mechanical. Eventually, they'll... Oh, they get two of those Stalkers, that's so sick. Two Stalkers, a couple of probes as well. Definitely value there for the Vikings, but now with another one of those War Prisms out, has should be able to continue his juggling for a little while longer. That's three Siege Tanks, though. It's pretty scary, right? That's a, a pretty solid amount of units. Now, I like this a lot. Kalazur decides to send one full medevac to the other side of the map. Haas needs to go. As soon as he realizes that... 
Well, he must realize it right now, right? There's not a lot of Marines here remaining. As soon as he realizes this, I think he needs to go. There's no defenses here available whatsoever for Haas. Oh, this could get awkward real quick. Galazur actually unseating all of the tanks at once, trying to inch them forward a little bit more. I guess a lot of the, um, yeah, a lot of the Marines were inside of the bunker as well. But here we go. Medivac is unloading all of those Marines on the other side of the map. All of those probes definitely are gonna go down. At the same time, the Adepts are shutting down a ton of those SCVs already. And the War Prism is trying to juggle the Immortals towards the high ground. Trying to pick up as many of those tanks as possible. So far, one Immortal once again ended up going down. Second Siege Tank now also shut down and that's a ton of SCVs already finding that that's right here. The uh, Siege Tank now being repaired up as well. Obviously, the Immortal can easily out-damage that. Siege Tank does get picked off, and that means that only a small amount of defenses actually remain. At the same time, though, all of the probes ended up going down. I think there's no more workers available, right? Yeah, there's zero probes remaining in this game. Has basically is now forced into an all-in scenario. Kalazur holding on for dear life. There are so many Immortals, though, that went down, right? Imagine if four more Immortals were available. If the Micro from Has would have been perfect, right? And I, I can see that happening over the course of, like, the next couple of months. If he fine-tunes these builds a little more, or maybe if a other Protoss player at, like, the top of the line... If, like, for example, a Classic or a SOS, right? Or a Zest starts doing these kind of builds, right? And they keep the immortal, their Immortals alive. Keep Like, if, if there were four additional Immortals right now, the amount of damage that Has would be able to do would be insane. These bunkers would just be too short. Both players now playing a really slippery dance, right? It's as if they're both trying to dance the tango while greased up in Vaseline. They're trying to hold hands, but it really doesn't happen because they're just... Oh, man, this is this is going to get messy real fast. So Kalazura is mining out of his main base. He's actually just mining it out right now with mules. These mineral patches will be gone in just a couple of seconds. Has to now check in as well if that is the case. At the same time, though... He lost his Nexus, right? So that means that Haas has got absolutely zero income. There's still that one Immortal coming up as well. Another Immortal is actually going to be really nice to have. Kalasura could try and maybe lift up the Command Center and try to mine from another base. He's going to need additional resources because the longer that this goes on, the harder this is going to be. Now, one Siege Tank is actually just about to spawn. This is absolutely critical. Beautiful Force would actually try to... Oh, dude, that was so sexy. Oh my god, Haas timing out. When that... Uh, siege tank should come out, putting a force field there to prevent that siege tank from spawning uh, on the top end of that factory. But Kalazur already ready for that. He boosted in the medevac and then picked up the immortal before the siege tank rather before it could be could be killed. <gasps> it is it is very easy to understand why people are massive fans of these two players right here. This is so cool. It's so hard to judge though. I mean, there's nothing annoying supply-wise. Kalazura is ahead, right? It's 32 supply. <laughs> the single zealot there actually blocking the command center from landing. But, I mean, 12 supply of that is, is caught up in workers. There's still that single war prism that can provide a lot of value here for Haas. And army-wise, they are dead even. I actually think I favor Haas in this scenario. One thing to keep in mind, though, is that Kalazur does still have bunkers. But in order to repair up bunkers, you need resources. He's actually going for a single Viking. Actually, that's maybe the best option he has. The thing is, though, I say I favor Haas here, but I'm not entirely sure. Judging by the fact that neither player really wants to engage, I mean, obviously, Kalazur doesn't want to push into a bunch of shield batteries. And judging by the fact that Kalazur isn't mining, this is going to be tricky. As soon as he's down these 45 minerals, Kalazur will no longer be able to repair up that bunker. Now, the one Viking is actually absolutely critical. It's really important that he uh, shoes away that... Oh, man. <laughs> Forcing the stim there. I wonder if that was on purpose by Haas. I think that's actually the first time that Kalazur may have very well, uh, you know, shown that he's got that upgrade. Or maybe he did it already during the previous ones as well. It's so hard to see, right, exactly what the, uh, what the best course of action is. I think that Kalazur is basically doing the best that Terran players know right now in order to counter this. I once again just want to reiterate, right? Has did not micro this perfectly. Obviously, it's very hard to do so, and obviously the same can be said as well for Kalazur. But imagine if just like two additional immortals were here right now. That would be absolutely game over. They would shut down that bunker and that uh, and that siege tank in just a matter of, of seconds. Well, at some point, both of these players are going to have to clash. The command center is still not landing. I kind of feel like Kalazur maybe needs to like send it over towards like the top right-hand corner. Just to force that Zealot really far away from home. 
Actually, the fact that, that um, the, the scanner went down, I think, for Kalazur to snipe the, uh, the, the Observer was a really smart move as well, because right now, the amount of information that Has has is very small. Right? It's really hard to say how much army there is actually here for this Terran player and whether or not you can commit. We're in a, a bit of an awkward stillmate right now. At some point, well, oh, the Siege Snake actually was rerouted there to try and enforce the Zealot out. Oh man, oh man, actually Kalazur is now lifting up everything. He's actually, oh no, he's just bringing the SCVs. Okay, so he's bringing the SCVs towards the low ground. Zealot was shut down. That does mean that Haas is gonna make the move right now. He's gonna try and force this, uh, this Terran player to go all in. Once again, Stim was activated. That does mean that these Marines can maybe go around. A bit of an aggressive move now. If they get picked off for free, that could easily be the end of the game. Haas does know now that a lot of these Marines are out on the map, but at the same time, Kalasur using the time that these Marines provided to start mining from the low ground expansion and that is absolutely critical now even unseating the tank very risky move there obviously that does leave it vulnerable but you can once again micro it with these medevacs Hass is gonna try and move down towards the low ground SCVs now pulled off the line as well and even though the warp prism micro was really good Kalazur is showing us that he can do the same with a medevac and he is capable of picking up the victory in an extremely well fought match. It is very, very easy to understand why Protoss players are becoming fans of this player right here. Playing something completely out of the ordinary, right? We're not seeing like a bunch of blink stalkers or maybe like a Stargate opener or a quick expansion into, you know, High Templar or Colossus or anything along those lines. No, Haas oftentimes just simply plays out one base strategies for up to 20 minutes. And he's really, really good at it. Now the thing is though, and, and I'm kind of wondering if, if this is, you know, what we will see. I feel like someone like, for example, SOS, who's very well known for, you know, playing his own styles as well. I feel like if someone like SOS, who I personally, and, and I don't mean to step on any toes here, but who I personally think is a stronger player than Haas, if someone like SOS executes a build like this, and he keeps a couple more Immortals alive, right, he could maybe even lose one or two, he would just stomp through this Terran player. And, I mean... Uh, for, for the longest time, counter rushing a Terran player was absolutely unheard of, and while this is technically not a counter rush, right, it's, it's kind of like a variation of it in a way, except without cannons, so it's maybe a bit of a weird way to put it like that. But this is a, a, a cheese that is 100% viable, and if you execute it really well, I think it's gonna be nearly impossible for Terran players to stop it. Although I guess only time will tell. It's so exciting though that even 8 years down the line, Protoss players are still figuring out strategies that are 100% viable. I mean, the thing is, obviously, the, the, the reason why this is a build that's possible is because of the fact that the shield battery is now in the game, rather than the mothership core. But the shield battery has been in the game since November, right? It's been, it's been like nearly like 9, 10 months since players really started perfecting this strategy. Isn't that cool? Isn't that awesome? The fact that with minor balance changes, the game's meta is still developing as much as it is. Anyway, if you would like to see more Haas games, let me know down below in the comment section of the video. I'm definitely uh, interested in covering at least like another, maybe like a Protoss versus Protoss and a uh, Protoss versus Zerk. It'd be cool to see the different variations. Because the, the, the scary part is that players know that he's going to do this and still they have an extremely tough time uh, shutting it down. Anyways, before I fanboy onwards, let's go ahead and end this video. If you are new, make sure you hit the subscribe button so you get notifications as soon as future videos go live. And if you made it all the way until the end of the video, do me a favor, hit me up with the like button, or I guess you're free to dislike it as well if you didn't like it. But anyways, um, also a special shout out to the Patreon supporters. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much for your love. I really appreciate it. But for now, I wanna thank you for watching. Have an amazing day. Do not forget to smile all right, and I will see you once again in the next one.